Hello. Hello. What are we on? Oh, well, I was kind of hoping this was Frithcast. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. I was hoping for the one about the, um, I was hoping for like the paranormal one. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, I need to go away and think about some things. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I just, <clears throat> I thought we could talk about like the Mothman or something for half an hour. Oh, the What's It Pass that I can never remember does. Oh, Dyatlov Pass. Dyatlov. Yeah. Do you know I can never remember the blasted name of that? I Dyatlov can't remember Pass. what it was actually called. Um, it's called something in... The Something Incident, isn't it? Well, they call it the, the Dyatlov Pass now, but it's <clears> named <throat> after one of the people that were involved in that incident. Um, the, the, like the leader of the expedition. Uh, the, the, um, I'm assuming the listeners will know about the Dyatlov Pass incident, but <clears throat> I would spend some time talking about it, but we're not a paranormal podcast, really. No. Um, we are, in fact, a Frithcast. Ta-da! <laughs> Theme tune sung this day, this phone by Kate. Thank you. <laughs> She'll be here all week. <clears throat> introduced well it done. was um, hello yes uh, yes i still can't, i can't remember what the place is called but i'll look it up at yeah, some yeah. point i'll put it in the notes we'll figure just it say out if anybody does well. it's, it's quite a it's quite a sad story because i mean it, obviously it does involve real people um, yes you know there's a lot of possible explanations for what happened um some more plausible than others uh but it's certainly interesting it can't be denied it's interesting and it's worth reading it is about. that but links in the description because we're going to come on back to a bit of modern heathenry with a good dollop of geekery. We're on the heathen one, that's right. We are. Okay. Come on back to the heathen one. Oh, wait, is this about 51? It is 51. Number 51. We've been doing this for 51. I know. Times. Yeah. Plus the XLs. Yeah. The specials. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite a lot, isn't it, really? It's not bad. Ah, so... Um, what are we going to talk about for number 51? Well, I thought we would say hello to the lovely listeners well, that's a before good idea. we start. Oh, you always were the sociable one. Hello, lovely listeners, hello. before we start. Hello, before we start. Ragged idiot. A man with a military bearing, which he tosses in the air, of course. <laughs> been watching you have you <clears throat> yes you're horrible aren't you <laughs> <laughs> okay <clears throat> let's just try and get the goons out of our system uh, why we've got it written down on a piece of paper <laughs> Campfire. If, they're, if they're new into the podcast, they've already gone. They probably <laughs> won't realise what you're in for. You've just had most of the geekery at the front rather than through the middle, but it's all good. That's all right. Welcome around the virtual we like to, campfire. We like to wait it in different places. Yeah. Isn't it? Surprise! Yeah. Surprise, geekery! Not now, Kato! <laughs> Would you like Welcome to introduce around yourself? The virtual campfire. Oh, the virtual campfire. Yes, <sighs> I remember that. Take a breath. I'm Suzanne Martin. 
I'm the UK ambassador for an organization called TAC, which is the Asatru community. The Asatru community, of which I am not part. Kind of ish. I am my. I'm. I'm. I'm Kate, and I'm. 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 Um, I'm married to Suzanne, and I'm. I live here. Yes. So uh, I tend to be here when she does these things. Coffee powered druid. Yay. Um. Yeah. Theoretically, coffee powered druid. Yeah. Together we are Frithcast. Yeah. Welcome on board. We are. We are Frithcast. We are our podcast. <clears throat> we are. We are the show. Oh. Ich bin ein Frithcaster. No, it doesn't work. I think... Aren't you supposed to take the iron out? Are you? I can't remember. I know they made a lot of fuss about him saying... Being a donut. Ich bin ein Berliner. Yeah. And people said, oh, he's, say, he's basically saying he's a, he's a donut or he's a hot dog or something. And actually, yeah. he's not. Uh, the German people listening would have understood exactly what he meant. Yes. Um, but people say he should have said, ich bin Berliner. Which means I am a person of Berlin. Oh. Even though the context <clears throat> said told them what he meant anyway. Yes. That's what I love about language. Yeah. It evolves, it changes, and so long as you're understood, it's pretty good. Context is brilliant. Context is all Meanings good. of words, origins of words. Did you plan this? <clears throat> because I did not. <laughs> I know what you were wanting to talk about, and that was uh, the most breathtakingly smooth link. Smooth. Smooth. It's velour. <laughs> Lila. <laughs> We're going to talk about him later. He's, he's a whole future episode of, yeah, I've got plans for him. <clears throat> I don't think anybody can ever say they've got plans for Zach Brown again, but I have got plans for him later episode. Lila, come so, and join me. <laughs> ah, no, that's just a no, brain let's going not. no moment. So let's talk but about I, words. I, words. I happen to know that you wanted <clears throat> to talk about words. I did. Words are something of a fascination for me. Likewise. Um, and the words that are involved with modern heathenry, there are many. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of specialist terms that we use that people new to the faith may not initially understand or understand the subtle differences between. And we're going to start with a discussion between the two of us, which could you probably know, lovely listeners, go anywhere <laughs> and we also can't teach you how to heathen please keep those two things very firmly in your conscious brain indeed they're going to become important later and there will be a test indeed your so, conscious brain or your pre-conscious brain if you want or your pre-conscious brain if you want it's like backup storage it's all good yeah so words what do you as a person who may be curious about the Norse gods, or may believe in the Norse gods, or may understand you've had a connection with one of the Norse gods. What is the name you use for yourself when you're talking about your faith? Ooh, ooh, I know. What? I know. Go, 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 they go. They will use, <clears throat> they, you, you know. Yeah. Will use heathen. Yes. We know that. That's that true? They can also use that. Uh, now... There are other ones that have more specific interpreter. By the way, stop me if I'm rushing ahead. No, no, keep going. There are good. other ones that have rather more specific senses to them, and not everybody will necessarily use them. Not everybody necessarily uses a satra, I know that. Yeah. Um, or a satra, you might satru see. A satra is the plural, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so you will have people who. Uh, Fawn said. Fawn said. Is one. Yeah. Odinist is one. Odinist, yes. The and you probably noticed a degree of caution in my voice. There might I said be that. a little bit of a degree of caution. So what <clears throat> I'd like to spend this episode doing mm -hmm. is looking at some of those terms. And I know which terms I prefer. Okay. I know which terms that when I'm explaining to somebody about my faith or whether they're asking me about my faith, I will use specific terms over other terms by preference. Yeah. By personal preference. This is me doing personal Opiniony preferency stuff. This is not. <gasps> this is not everybody's personal opiniony <laughs> preferency stuff. I am using mine as an example because surprisingly, it's one I know. Yeah. So, we might want to have a look at the difference between the term heathen, yeah, and the term pagan. Yes. Not all heathens are pagan. Not all pagans are heathen. End of discussion. No. <laughs> what do you mean? There's more to it than that. But there must be a difference then. <clears throat> there is. Yeah. There's all manner of. 
<clears throat> there is difference and there isn't difference. It's kind of like Schrodinger's heathen. I would like, yes, if I may, to tell me a story. <laughs> I would like to uh, invoke a, and I'm not sure whether we can we put like sound clips in this from yeah. something. Are they big black and pendulous sound clips? Because well, I'm know. getting a bit worried here. You, you know. never know. Heavy black and pendulous. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You know it way better than I do. Do not do it. Come on then. Okay. You see, if I if I if I think we can legally do it. <clears throat> I'm inclined to put... I might, might not, actually, because okay. it might be too much. To, anyway. We can always put a link in the description. We can. Yeah. To the bit in The Wicker Man. We can... There are film clips. There are cinematographer, cinematographic clips. Extracts. Yes. Excellent. Available on a thing called YouTube. YouTube. Dot com. <clears throat> it is, or dot wherever it is. Dot com. But yes, we'll put some links into the description. Very briefly, Wicker Man involves, if you've not seen it, do go and watch it. Uh, the 1970s original version is uh, the better version, although I didn't... Edward Wood... Wood, 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 and Christopher Lee. Lee, 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 Not quite. No. There was a remake with Nicolas Cage, which was... An interesting artistic... Breathtaking. Yeah. Um... But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of the original one. Uh, Edward Woodward plays a police officer in Scotland, in the islands of Scotland, and he uh, gets sent to investigate a missing, missing girl on an island where there is a Summer community. Isle. The island of Summer, Summer Isle, Isle? yes. Uh, and there is a, a little local community on Summer Isle that's quite isolated. And he goes out there in, a, in his little seaplane and he starts investigating. And it, anyway, cut a long story short. Spoiler for the Wicker Man! Spoiler for the Wicker Man! Okay. Okay. I think they've got it. Yeah, I just have to make sure it's the internet. Yeah, yeah. People don't <clears throat> like it. No. Briefly, he discovers a very sort of classical pagan community mm. living on this island. Now, this is a he's a he's a very much a a very uh, uh, devout Christian, and he's outraged by all of this. And he goes to see the local lord, mm. Lord Summer Isle, played by Christopher Lee, being magnificent because Christopher Lee. Because Christopher Lee. <clears throat> And they're both magnificent, let's face it. And uh, he go, he's having a conversation. They're walking through this garden, and, and Lord Summer Isle is explaining that he's uh, bringing his community uh, mm. to worship the old gods to get better harvests and all yeah, that kind of thing, yeah. and get back into nature and, and all that kind of thing. And, <clears throat> and he talks about his father at one point. He says, my father brought me up to appreciate the old gods, to appreciate our link to nature, all this sort of And Edward Woodward interrupts him. Uh, he says, he brought me up to... And Edward Woodward cuts in and says, he brought you up to be a pagan! And he just looks down at him, because Christopher Lee, he's like up here. Mm. And he just looks down at him and says, <clears throat> A heathen, conceivably, but not, I hope, an unenlightened one. Yes, and that is kind of the core of where I want to go. Okay. So let's start with the term pagan. Some heathens will describe themselves as pagan as well as heathen. Mm -hmm. Some heathens prefer to just describe themselves as heathen and or other term as applicable, but they won't describe themselves as pagan. Okay. Some heathens will go to pagan gatherings, pagan festivals, pagan moots, pagan camps. Mm -hmm. Other heathens prefer not to. Okay. So if you're shining new and you're thinking, well, this heathen pagan thing, I'm not sure how that fits together. Mm. Maybe we can talk through a little bit of that dynamic. Okay. And give you a bit of a clearer idea of what it is. According to me and Kate, not necessarily what everybody else <laughs> thinks it is. Because words are <clears throat> strange little critters. They're marks on a surface that may or may not be permanent that convey meaning from one individual to another without necessarily that first individual being there at all. They're surprisingly shifty for things that are written down. They are surprisingly shifty. So the words... Slick it. They are slick it words. So the, the meaning of words shifts yeah and sometimes the spelling of words shifts which makes it even more fun well when you consider there's only been standardized spelling since about 1800 and something yeah we've got a whole lot of spelling that might not be quite the way we expected mm. to see it if you compare anglo-saxon english with shakespearean english with modern english you've got three written languages that are ostensibly english look at chaucer <clears throat> Really? Look at Chaucer. Yes. Especially in that first couple of scenes when he's naked. Eep. Sorry. 
Carry on. You are not sorry at all. Not really, no. No. Because you were looking at Chaucer when he was naked, weren't you? Mm. Okay. So, English does strange and wonderful things, and what I define pagan as might not be what the next person defines pagan as. And the terms that you choose to define yourself may be ones that will change throughout your life. Mm-hmm. You may find that other terms become more appropriate as you develop your practice, your spirituality. Yep. You may find that certain terms drop away. You may find that you would come to appreciate a new definition for a term. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is <clears throat> this is a con- this is like a constant part of life. I mean, I'm, you know, I... I get it in religious slash spiritual terms. I get it in all, all, all sorts of... All the way through life. Yes. You know. So these these terms that we're looking at, let's look at the word pagan to start with. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to hand over to Kate. Are you? Yes. Well, there's because a surprise. she gets very, very happy when she's asked to explain <laughs> words. As long as they're words I know. Is pagan a word you know? <clears throat> now, pagan is a... Is a... <laughs> it is. I'm going to settle down for story time. <laughs> Not that story time. Go, go, Kate, go. Run <laughs> wild and free, go. <laughs> Pagan's an interesting one for me because whereas... I mean, I like I've said, I'm not a heathen. I'm not part of the, 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 the Norse, North Germanic mm-hmm. kind of uh, religious tradition. I am, in fact, I know we said, so we said druid earlier on, and I do use the term druid because it's the it's the it's the closest I can get. Yeah, but it's not strictly accurate. Theory. Most, well, that's not closer. The, that's, that's that's an unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um, covered in bees. Covered in bees. Um, but um, it, druid isn't isn't strictly speaking applicable to me. It's just it's it's a good illustration. If I say to somebody, I am. You know, I'm a druid. They 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 have an image in their head, and it. I mean, of granted, that it's, means. it's probably an image of people pran- prancing around at Stonehenge, <clears throat> and I don't prance as a rule. I'm not a prancer. No, by nature, nor are most druids that I know, to be honest. Anyway, point is, what I actually define myself as is a Roman pagan, mm. and the fact that I associate myself particularly with the gods of the woods and the wilds and all that kind of thing. Although, again, I'm not I'm not a practically wild person. I'm not out climbing trees and things. But I have this link in my head to the, the, the sort of the trees and the thorns and mm. all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I use Druid as a, as, a, as, a, as a matter of simplicity. But Roman pagan is probably more accurate. And pagan is a Roman word. So where we could debate, should a heathen be referred to as a heathen or a pagan? Can they use both? You know, which mm-hmm. would they prefer? For me, the word is pagan and it applies because I look to that sort of... Yeah. Slightly Roman, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roman tradition. Because it, it originated with ancient Rome as the empire was beginning to Christianise. Okay. Now, contrary to uh, a lot of the impressions you'll, you'll, you'll get from, from like a, 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 a sort of fairly superficial reading, a lot of the, 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 the conversion of the empire was voluntary. Mm-hmm. The new religion, as it, as it, once it overcame <laughs> the initial um, persecutions and the initial sort of suspicion of the pagan majority... Mm. It became a very, very much a, 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 a sort of almost a fashionable thing, mm. um, and it was certainly the case that the people in the in the cities and the towns were adopting Christianity at a faster rate than the people out in <clears throat> in the sticks, in the wilds. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, this is the same even even today. There are places up in the north of where we live, up in the up in the, the moors and mm. and, the, and the hills. There are little isolated communities where you find a very very strong link to maybe not pre-christian but you find a very very strong link to older traditions that have kind of died out everywhere so else. well dressing is well the dressings. one i'm thinking of yep, yeah yeah well, we'll put some links in the thingy come see them they're awesome yeah. <laughs> so but there are two this, this leads us to one of the two basic etymologies that are suggested for the word pagan so etymology that word etymology etymology is, is like uh, sat nav for words. Yeah, it's simply the root, the the path that Where a word, a word has, has taken come from. in order to evolve. Okay, cool. Um, and and one of the one of the, the etymologies for the word pagan, and one that was accepted fairly widely for a long, long time, is that it means country dweller. Mm. So it means a, a dweller in the countryside. It has a fairly pejorative spin to it. It's it's like in the sense of a country bumpkin, or okay, a, so a hillbilly, and almost a <clears> negative. <throat> yeah. Kind of connotation in terms of intelligence, in terms of spiritual practice. Yeah, 
Yeah. As you would imagine, uh, if you if you stereotype people who live in the cities today, somebody who lives in the middle of London, mm. you know, who's in who's in with all the the, the, the sort of London goings on, whatever, and they might look at somebody who lives out in in in, in some countryside area and think bumpkin. Everything you know? north of Tottenham Court <clears throat> Road. <clears throat> exactly. Okay. So there, there was this sense that the, the the people in the countryside were lagging behind, less enlightened, less civilized, less connected. Yeah. Okay. And they hadn't picked up this new religion that was sweeping the rest of the empire. And so the word for country dweller, Paganus, or presumably Pagana, came to mean one who is out of touch, who is behind, who has not adopted the, the, new, uh, okay. the new way of looking at things. So it <clears throat> gradually became, to, it came to have this association with somebody who is still clinging on to the pre-Christian ways of things. It's ironic when you think that Jesus' ministry is rural and itinerant. Yes. And he doesn't even go into the cities. Yeah. He stays way out of them. He's out in the villages doing the thing. This is very true. And yet you get Paganus, meaning somebody who's in the country who hasn't caught up. Pagani being the plural. <clears throat> mm. um, yeah, and, and, and it is interesting. It's, and it, uh, the Romans, obviously, are very urban-minded people. Mm. Uh, they're all about the... the, the the sort of the society uh, and all that kind of thing, and it, and it and it's very much. Um, I mean, they obviously they 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 did countryside stuff, they did farming and uh, and whatever, but it was always as a sort of a satellite of yes, a, town, yeah. a big town. The countryside fed the towns. Yeah, yeah. But that it, that actually leads us quite well onto the second etymology, which has come up more recently. But it's it's um I I think I find it a little bit more convincing. I'm not sure why. Mm. But the Roman Empire, as you know, was very militaristic. This is not something I particularly I particularly would want to emulate myself. It's not it's not part of my my makeup. But the society as a whole mm. was very militaristic and respected military prowess. Uh, you know, conquests, all that kind of thing. Again, not not. Not great in my view, but they are. And they, the army was very, very important then, as armies are well respected, generally well respected by their people now. Mm. The same was said of the Romans. The second etymology for pagan is that it means civilian. Because when Christianity was brought into the empire, it was militarised. Mm. It was turned into a regimented, mm. regulated, disciplined way of doing things. Now, you've you've said already that uh, Christ was um, Christ as, as he's spoken of in in the Bible, which I realise is a very complex prospect in itself. But generally speaking, as you say, itinerant, very humble, very you know, um, uh, living sort of hand to mouth and walking from place to place. And, mm. You know, Jesus didn't have a horse; no. he, he came into <laughs> Jerusalem on a, on a donkey because he wanted to make the point that he's not he's not some great warrior king. No, an odd for a militaristic society, <clears throat> mm. but. So civilian, where does that, how does that fit into the definition that, you know, we understand now? As Christianity came into, into the empire, and as I say, it, was, it began to be regulated and regimented, we get the concept of the army of Christ. Mm. Now, that wasn't something that would have been familiar or would have, wouldn't have been, uh, wouldn't necessarily have been something that, that Jesus talked about himself. No. But it's something that the Roman... <clears throat> church as it became mm. eventually created this idea of we are the army of christ we we go forward and we fight the forces of the of the, of the devil and all this kind of thing and you get it now with onward christian soldiers and all this imagery mm. of banners and swords and all that kind of thing jerusalem and jerusalem you get all this now that would have been absolutely second heaven for well bad phrasing but th that would have been second nature for romans mm. because that speaks to how their society was built Whereas people who didn't conscript themselves into the army of Christ or weren't, weren't, didn't join up, didn't, mm. didn't, didn't sign up for, for, the, for the battle, were civilians. And so the, the, there is this impression that there is this understanding that the word paganus, which we, we heard before, actually meant civilian, one who is not part of the military mm. structure. OK, so in both of these, it's almost like an opposition to this is the Abrahamic Jewish faith. This person is not part of that, therefore they are pagan. Whether they are see atheist, agnostic, whatever, yep. they're not. So it's not just what we now understand as pagan in the modern day. Yeah, Pagan in the modern day, for me, breaks down to a few categories. Yeah, In one category, you have reconstructed religions. 
Yeah. So that includes, for me, things like Northern shamanic practice, heathenism, uh, Kemetic practice, Hellenic Greek practice, mm-hmm. Romano British practice. All of these practices that come from a historical period that are being recreated, being re-understood. Yeah. You also have a large amount of pagans who may say that they are pagan, but also use a more specialised term for their own individual practice. You might get eco-witch, eco-warrior, neo-witch, druid. You get Although the... that's part of the historical, kind of that one bridges the two, but you get everything from eclectic witches to shamans. Wiccans. Wiccans, yeah. people who use totemics, people who are eclectic, who will take parts of practice and blend them together into their own individual understanding yeah. of spiritual path, whether that be crystals, cards, candles, a theme. Yeah. Gods and goddesses from one pantheon. One god or goddess from a multiple pantheon. Mm-hmm. Or gods and goddesses from across several multiple pantheons. It's, yeah, it's so complex. The, the terms that people use to describe themselves when they say, oh yes, I'm this, and people look at them a bit blank and they go, I'm pagan, they go, oh... Which is yeah, which is what, which is where your understanding comes from. Yeah, and that and that as I say, that's that's why I use druid, even though it's not strictly accurate, but it's it's close. It's sort of a little bit of inaccuracy for the sake of understanding. Yes. Or a little bit of imprecision, let's say, for the sake yes. of understanding. And so I use heathen in the same way. Yeah. Somebody, you know, I will generally, if I am describing myself to somebody else, I will use the term heathen. Mm. And. If I'm describing myself to somebody I know is of the Abrahamic faith, then the smile is on me because I know what I mean and they know what they think I mean. <laughs> and they're right and I'm right and it's a good place to start the conversation. He brought you up to be a heathen. No, pagan. <laughs> Misquote. Yeah. So Lose points. They understand me as a heathen, as one who is not underst- enlightened in the ways of God. I understand myself as a heathen, as in I follow the Norse gods. So we're both right. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of, <laughs> but so it, that gets fun. It does make it does make an interesting point because the the words change their sense and are and are evolved and replaced as as time goes on. I mean, mm. you you say you say heathen, meaning if I understand the etymology correctly, broadly, it's it's said to 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 be uh, something to do with a dweller on the heath or something like that. Yes, it's, it that's can the, be. The, yeah. the, it's the commonly so explained again, root of the word. Parallels with living in the wilds. Indeed. Yeah. So there is that parallel there, but to, to a Christian, and I suppose uh, we're not having a go at Christians here. We just we 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 live in a predominantly Christian, a culturally also, Christian country. They're the easiest religion that everybody has a yeah. base understanding of to be able to make. Well, that's why that's parallel. that's why I say I, I single them out particularly because we probably have outside of our own particular traditions, we probably have the most experience with Christianity as yeah. a faith. But I was I was brought up in a Christian environment and to me then when somebody pointed at somebody and said oh they're a right heathen they are you know it, it was very I don't I didn't live in a particularly puritanical uh, no. in, uh, place so it was usually said in fairly in jest but the understanding was that person was benighted and god forsaken and all that kind of thing was not an enlightened intelligent exactly individual so for me I know what heathen personally means to me mm. lovely listeners this is your turn. What terms do you use to describe yourself? Why do you choose those and not other terms? Mm. You know, if you know about other terms, if somebody called you a filthy heathen, would you be quite happy about it? Were you actually, and this. As a dedicated filthy trucker and filthy basker. Yes. I can. <laughs> so what, what are the words that you use to describe yourself? Mm. I like the word heathen I will use that in preference but it's not everybody's word no it's not everybody is entitled to use it if they want to use it and want to be included but it's not the word that everybody may personally choose to describe their own faith practice Mm. some people might say well I'm an eclectic heathen yeah some people might say well I'm a Christio heathen yeah I'm a druidic heathen I'm a Wiccan heathen yeah I am a traditional heathen in the fact that I follow Thor and nobody else. See, I or have... I am dedicated to Freya yeah. and nobody else. I know about the others, but Freya is my thing. That is henotheism. 
Henotheism. Talk me through that word, henotheism. Henotheism is where you recognise a, a multitude of gods, yeah. but you worship one. Out of that multitude. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, I mean, I, I, far, far be it from me to apply labels to people, but my, my assumption would be, if you define yourself as an Odinist, for example, yeah. my assumption would be that you single out Odin for particular attention, that you worship, you, might, you may well pay attention to the others as well, but Odin is your primary focus and that makes you yeah. bordering on henotheism. But that to me is then different to the understanding that you have a specialist connection with one particular mm. of the Norse gods, and that can be described as having a patron. Yes. Your patron, it's possible that they may change yes. throughout your spiritual practice, throughout your understanding and your experience. You may get more than one patron. Mm. You may get two or three, or you may get one, and then you may get another one and just focus on one at once as they come to you individually. For example, uh, from, from my angle, I mean, I don't have a particularly a particular personal relationship with my gods. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a, a close relationship with my gods because I don't want anything from them and they don't want anything from me. And this is, as far as you're concerned, a fairly good, healthy place to Basically, be. Basically, yeah. yeah. Um, the the in, <laughs> Roman religion is very transactional. It's, it's very much about, you know... It's business, isn't it? It's essentially plus, a business, yeah. Here is your bill plus VAT. Yeah, they will do their thing, and I need to do my thing, and I need to try and live as, as, as decent a life as I can. But that's not because I might upset... Well, I mean, it is because I might upset the gods. I don't want the whole, the whole lightning thing. Yeah, not a good idea. But it's more about what happens afterwards. To where you go. You know, uh, and, and even then, I don't have to aim particularly high, because there's basically three options. Mm. One of which is Elysium. I ain't going to Elysium. Okay. Because I ain't heroic or noble or any of that stuff. Yet. Yet. Uh, one is Tartarus, which was initially set up to accommodate the defeated Titans from mm. the uh, the old war, the Titanomachy. That's, that's a, they, they, they kind of will go down there and, and basically people who are, who are the, you know, the right dregs, mm. evil, nasty people, uh, traditionally get sent in, sent there with them. So it's, it's kind of like hell, but without all the fire and the poking of forks into backsides. Yeah. In the middle, mm-hmm. you've got Asphodel. Okay. Or the Asphodel Meadows, which is just kind of, meh. It's nice. And it's where, meh. Well, it's, it's all right. Mm. It's where, meh, people go. Okay. And as a lifelong, meh, people. <laughs> You're it. That's, that's, <laughs> You're going there. If I get there, I'm happy. Okay. So, that's you know that's that's my, but I, in actual in, in terms of actually going to the gods and saying I want such a thing it be well I want such a thing so therefore I will give you this if yes. you will give me that and that's basically how it works. Otherwise they just get on with their stuff. And you get on with your stuff. I just try and keep out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So so there is a little bit of a difference there. Yeah. With your practice and with my practice and also between the words heathen and pagan and they're just two of a whole bouquet of words that you can use. You can personally choose to describe yourself. And the good thing about self-describing how you feel about things is that you can change that description as many times as you like. Mm. As you go along, you don't have to ask anybody else's permission to get it authorised. Absolutely not. You can just say, this is how I define my faith. These are the words that I am going to use. So lovely listeners, we are going to put some links in the description, all the links. Go have fun with them. If you would like to find us online. If you want to find us online. Our time around the virtual campfire for this episode is at an end. But we will be back soon. If you would like to find us online. My name is Suzanne Martin. You can find me on Facebook and on Twitter at Geetha in Jeans. And if you want to find me, um, you will find my uh, shabby website at glassrain.net. Uh, or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter as Kate Colburn. Um Don't go on my Twitter feed. It's, ma- it's, it's, mainly, it's mainly politics <laughs> it's, and arguing at the moment. Yeah, it's all good. So What can I say? I'm British. Um, drop us a friend request. Come and say hi. There's always room around the virtual campfire for a bit of a natter and a chat, uh, given the fact that there might be a wee bit of a time difference from wherever you are in the world. Yeah. And the virtual campfire will always be here. It just might take us a little while to wake up and get to talking yeah yeah. we will if we can that would be fab and we'd love to hear from you so until next time lovely listeners we will see you then bye 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 bye